Uh, hi everybody, welcome back to my channel, welcome to episode 3 of this podcast. Um, I'm super happy to be doing this, this is really exciting. Um, welcome back, welcome back. Um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Kayleen. I am the uh, principal fiber artist behind Little Bean Crochet. Um, I'll put the information here on screen. Um, if I can't up here, I'll link it up in the cards and also in the description, but you can find me on social media. Uh, Facebook is Little Bean Crochet Shop, and Instagram as Little Bean Crochet, and on Ravelry as KM Weaver. Three different usernames. It would have been Little Bean Crochet on Facebook, but there was also already another crocheter who was using it differently than I would use it, but Facebook doesn't allow you to, you know, put periods or dashes or whatever. It doesn't, it doesn't make a difference. So, Little Bean Crochet Shop on Facebook, Little Bean Crochet on Etsy, Little Bean Crochet on Instagram, and I'm on Ravelry as KM Weaver. So, welcome back to my podcast. So, this podcast is, you know, some general babble about everyday life. I'm a mom of two and I also am a crocheter. I've been crocheting now for about 20 years and I'm a beginning knitter. I, I dabble here and there with knitting but I'm not anywhere near as good as some of the people I've been following. I am so inspired. But, um, but welcome back. So today I have a few things to chat about. Um, I have some questions. I started a little group on Ravelry if you want to join uh, for this podcast. It's the Little Bean and Me podcast group and I'll also put a link for that in the description box below so you can check that out where I have a couple threads open, you know, introduce yourself. I'd love to get to know who's watching this podcast, who's interested in it. And um, also, you know, if you have any questions for me, which is something to talk about today, you can always ask me anything you'd like. Um, I have a section in the forum that's ask a die or ask me anything, and you can just ask me questions. And um, each podcast, I'll just pick a few questions and answer them here for you guys. So, you know, feel free to ask me whatever you'd like. Uh, so, let's just get into everything. Today's been crazy hot. Where are you from? Is it hot where you are? Because I am dying here. So I'm in Massachusetts. I'm a New England girl, born here. You know, uh, I'm used to these extreme weather temperatures. Oh, <laughs> my husband is texting me about Pokemon Go. Oh my goodness. So, um, okay, he's talking to me about PewDiePie's video about Pokemon Go, but anyway. <laughs> Bing, bing, interruptions. So um, it's so hot, it's so hot, it's unbearable. And I think as I've gotten older, I've become less resilient to these crazy weather changes. And also since having kids, you know, dragging them out in the heat, like I just can't even. If I'm gonna be uncomfortable, then I'm not gonna drag my kids out, I'm sorry. I'm just gonna go to the mall, we're gonna walk around, we're gonna have some lunch, and then we're gonna come home for a nap. Well, at least for Tucker, he's napping. Uh, Cece's occupied on her iPad, per usual, parenting win right there. We always pull it out when we really need it and uh, to film, I definitely need her to be on her iPad. If you didn't watch the first episode of this podcast, we had a nice little hiatus from content. Uh, I wasn't even sure if I was going to make this a podcast, but Cecilia wasn't you know, fully focused on stuff and she was in and out and I had to keep editing out all of these things. She's really cute. She's fun, but uh, she's not, it's not really conducive for getting things done. So. Let me know down below, where are you from? What's the weather like? I hear everywhere around the country is ridiculously hot and Washington DC was the hottest place a couple days ago and just unreal, I just can't even believe it. All right, so why don't we just jump into things that are in progress? Let's do some works in progress. Um, I do have a couple things in progress uh, and I have one crochet and one knit that are in progress and one knit, I know, one knit. What am I doing? Um, and I have a potential project coming up uh, for a mermaid blanket, which would be really fun to show here. Um, I don't think it would be done with independently dyed yarns only because um, my customer who's talking to me about it, I think needs to go a little more cost effective. So you might just use something simple like Burnett blanket or you know Burnett chunky or whatever, the chunkier yarn is to do a double strand so that she can get a nice blanket for at, le at least a reasonable price. It's for a little girl for Christmas. So, um, okay, the two things I have, I'll show you the crochet first. So this crochet that I started, I started a couple days ago 
This is uh, the Water Reads hat. It's a Mamachi crochet pattern. It is quite nice. Um, if you can believe it, yes, this is crochet. It looks like knit and I love it. I, It's funny, I'm obsessed with knit, but I can't knit very well. So I'm always looking for patterns like the mermaid, in cap, the mermaid in shawl. It looks just like knit. And also this hat, she's coming out with another pattern that has a few more of these um, these rows, so I think it's four rows per spike stitch. So this is the Water Reads hat. It's worked up and down the hat in this way. So here's my last row that I worked. Um, and you work in the back loop of your, your row, which creates the more knit, like you know that stockinette look. And then every few rows um, she creates in the stitch work in here, I don't want to give away too many details because this is a paid pattern. I will link it below if it's something you're interested in. But she uses a spike stitch, which is a, a single crochet. Sometimes, you know, it's a double crochet, depending on whatever pattern you're looking at. But it's basically just a stitch that goes from one row down a few extra rows. So to create this lovely, um, this lovely work, here's the back. So even the back looks pretty nice, but the front, it's super stretchy. Uh, it stretches like a knit piece and it has the look of a knit piece. If you've never seen any of her work, she's a great crochet designer. Um, I'm not sure if she's super new on the crochet front. Um, I, I mean, I'm only just really pushing myself to put my projects up in Ravelry, be really active up in Ravelry, so it's like I'm even a little new on the scene uh, as ter in terms of Ravelry. But this is the crochet project that I'm working on. It's the Water Reads hat by Mama Chi Crochet Designs. And I'll link her pattern down below and I'll put it somewhere on the screen here so that you can see what it is. Um, or I'll even I'll post a picture. Gaylene of the future, please post a picture. Okay, so then my knit piece, this is a free pattern. This is the Honey Cowl by Anne Maria. Now you see I've only just cast this on and these needles are not the best needles. These are just basic Takumi Clover needles, five millimeters you get at the craft store. But this is the first, I'd say real serious piece like that. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna make this. This looks really cool. Um, so it's basically a four row repeat. So you have a few rows of knit and then you have a four row repeat where it's similar to um, the linen stitch or the woven stitch where you're doing yarn overs. So this is a free pattern. So I'll tell you a little bit about the pattern. So it's, you know, pearl yarn over, pearl yarn over, and then the next row is a knit and then it's a yarn over, pearl yarn over, pearl. So you get like this opposite effect. So there's a pearl and a yarn over. Oh, this is where my mistake is. So I made a mistake. And it was right at the beginning and I didn't realize I made this mistake till I made it to the end because you're supposed to end the first row. It's either on a pearl or yarn over. It's a two, two stitch pattern around the whole cowl. It's an even uh, number that you cast on. So I cast on 180 stitches and I got to the end and I had a pearl instead of a yarn over. Not a yarn, I keep saying yarn over. Why am I saying that? It's a slip stitch. <laughs> See, I'm not a very good knitter. I have to learn more terms for knitting. It's a slipped stitch. So you take the yarn and you leave your yarn either in front or behind, you know, in a linen stitch, you're, you're um, going back and forth, you know, on the purl side, the yarn is behind on the wrong, on the right side, it's on the opposite side. <laughs> and then on the knit side, it's on the side facing you. So um, it's a slip stitch. So you keep the yarn in front and you slip the stitch off of your needle to the other needle. So you get this cool, it's called the honey cowl. So it almost looks like a honeycombed effect. Um, I'll have to put a picture up. I'm looking at it on my computer right now. Um, so it's kind of cool. It's, I'm a beginner. So I'm, I'm even proud that I made it like six rows in. This is like, this is six rows. <laughs> or it's almost six rows. Here's my beginning. So I still have a bit left to do of the final pattern and then do another knit and then I'll be seven rows, that'll be seven rows. So, I have a knit in progress and I'm not very good and I'm really slow, but um, 
I really want to be able to do like these awesome shawls like even down at my local yarn shop they'll get the samples from the oh I never mentioned the yarn okay they get these samples from you know the manufacturers of like example pieces so um, there's some of these beautiful shawls and I'm like it's just a freaking <laughs> it's just um, what is it garter stitch it's just garter stitch so you're just knitting it, knitting it, knitting it, knitting it, going back and forth. And I'm like, I could totally do that, but I'm too scared <laughs> to do that. So I'm just working slow. So that's the pattern. So this is in my own, this is a simple DK. This is a single ply, 100% merino. This is my favorite stuff to crochet with, which is why I carry it in my shop. But then the other hat, this is done in Plymouth Yarns in the Butter colorway. This is the Superwash DK. So it's funny, like these are both DK, but I feel like the DK I have is closer to a worsted weight than a DK. It's so funny, yarn terminology and you know, what is what weight, really wraps per inch. I should be wrapping. I gotta get myself a nice wrapping tool too. Okay, other dyers out there, people who are in the yarn business, do you have to have a, a wrapping tool to do wraps per inch? Because I have to look up how to do wraps per inch just so that my customers have a good idea of the thickness of the yarn. Because in certain, even though I have like a four ply sock and then I have a two ply sparkle, the two ply sparkle seems to be finer or the four ply seems finer. Like one of them seems a little bit finer even though they're both sock weight yarns. So. I want to get some new snack. You want a snack? Okay. I'm back. We had a small snack break. <laughs> Unexpected snack break. I thought she would be better. Only got like 10 minutes in before she was like, I need a snack. Even though we just ate lunch. Let's be fair, we just ate lunch. Um, anyway, so wraps per inch tool. That's what I was talking about. Um, what do you guys recommend? I have to do some research into it just so that I can get it because the distributor that I order my yarn from doesn't give a wraps per inch or recommended needle size and I want to make sure that I can include that on packaging going forward so that I can give my customers a better idea of just you know instead of just saying fingering weight or saying DK because that can mean several things to have a better idea of wraps per inch so that they know what kind of needles they would possibly need um, anyway all right so that was works in progress and now I do have a couple finished objects finished objects and they're both hats and if you follow me on Instagram I'll make sure to put my link below um, you'll you would have seen one which is this one I'm going to show you this ba -ba -ba, is the puff stitch beanie this is by the hook nook um, if you don't follow her she's the dot hook dot nook on Instagram she's also on Ravelry as THN Jessica, the hook nook Jessica, and she's a crochet artist and designer, I think out of Seattle, and she has a ton of really cool patterns. Um, this is definitely my favorite pattern. Uh, she's so fast. She's even faster than me, and I'm pretty quick with the needle. She is like, ooh, she's lightning. She has this technique down. So this is basically puff stitch. This is also a paid pattern, and it's worked from the brim up, which is quite nice. I made this for my daughter. And this is in the dirigible plums colorway of my simple DK yarn. You can see it's beautiful. We have a nice color variation. So this is a variegated skein. Um, and this is why I like to dye my own yarn. If you didn't see the last episode where I went on this huge 25 minute tangent about why I don't like commercial variegated skeins, this is the reason. So if I purchased a variegated skein at a commercial yarn store, just like, you know, Michaels or AC Moore or wherever, the variegated skeins that are commercially produced, meaning like more large scale, tend to not be like this. Oh my god. Now he's texting me about Wheezy Waiter. <laughs> Interruptions. Okay. I'll check his text later, and if you're watching, I'll check your text in a few minutes. So, um, this is why I like to dye my own yarn, because this is what true variegation should be. This is what it should look like. We have several different colors in here. They're in all different areas. They're kind of random. Sometimes they pool, sometimes they don't. Um, there's a general, you know, you can see there's a general clustering of certain colors, but it doesn't look garish. It doesn't look bad in any way. It actually looks quite nice 
nice texture, you can see the stitches, and it's not just like, here are the rows of stitches, it's not just like blue, 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 red, 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 blue, 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 red, 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 blue, red, 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 blue, 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 like it's not like that. So um, this is for my daughter, and it fits me. I don't look very good in hats, so we'll put it on. So on me, it fits me pretty well. Um, it has a good stretch on the band. I don't know if you can see, I can't look and turn my head at the same time. But it's super slouchy and so cute on my daughter. She is gonna be three and she has a big head. <laughs> Bigger than your average size. So this is like, this is kind of a child to teenage size hat. And I made it larger specifically for her because I know I, I, she wasn't gonna fit in a toddler size hat. That's just not the case. So then, my other finished object is another one of these hats. Now, I've been crocheting a lot and doing a lot of work in my own yarn only because I really want to see how these yarns work up because I'm just beginning dyeing. This is the, the beginning of the journey for me and I want to be able to show everybody what things look like. The only thing I can't do is socks. Hope you have any sock knitters out there <laughs> um, who are shawl knitters who like to knit up indie dyed yarns. Um, I would love to see how my yarns knit up. I'm just telling, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> anyway, so I finished this for my son. So this is quite a bit smaller. It's the same pattern. Um, so this is probably the toddler size hat and he is going to be one next month and he has a huge head. If you saw the picture of my husband last week, you would know that my husband has a huge head so my kids have huge heads. But this is the most recent colorway that I dyed. This is the Shell Cottage Shell Cottage uh, colorway. It is a gradient colorway. So it goes from a deep navy all the way down through, you know, some blue tones and then to a sandy color into gray. So it's, you know, Harry Potter inspired, yada yada. But um, this is my last latest finished project because I really wanted to see how this yarn was going to work up. Um, I did cut out some of the gradient because I knew making the hat smaller. This used an entire skein. This also used um, almost an entire skein, but I didn't want it to be, you know, just all tan the whole hat. So I cut out some of the tan gradation, but you can't really tell where I did it because the colors just fade. You can even see here how the colors are fading from tan into this aqua fading into this blue and then up here in the ball there's some really dark navies and you can, it's kind of cool I can see the the fading from darker to lighter tones so this is for my son I'm excited I tried it on him it's a little snug but I think if I block it out just a little bit it will um, stretch out Plus, this band is super stretchy, so I think we're going to have a, a, a good amount of wear time in it come the fall. I don't think his head's going to grow exponentially over the next few months. One can hope, one can hope. So, um, that's it. That's my finish, my last finished project. Finished project. Okay. Uh, do you guys have any finished projects? Let me know. I'd like to see. Start a thread in the Ravelry group. Let's show some some cool FOs if you like. Um, so yeah, so speaking of crochet and knit and Ravelry groups and things, um, as things are getting rolling here. Okay, okay. Interruption number two. Mommy, what are you doing out here? iPad only works sometimes, it worked last week. It worked like a charm and this week it's just not working. Okay, so anyway, so speaking of the Ravelry group and crochet and knit finished projects, I definitely want to host a crochet along and a knit along um, for, for you guys and do a little giveaway um, and as things kind of develop here. You know, I'm just beginning here in the whole YouTube knit and crochet podcast dyer realm, but it's so fun to participate in those things and I definitely want to host one here in the community that I'm building uh, for those who do knit and who do crochet um, to include both and to 
you know, if you use independently dyed yarns, that's great. And if you don't, that's great. I'm just trying to think of some themes coming up here. You know, we're ending the summer, coming into the fall, so I'm thinking about some kind of fall cal, either a Halloween cal or something along those lines, but to do it for maybe a month or two and then draw a winner um, at the end of September, early October. I think it may be a spooky cow, something really fun and festive for Halloween. So, so stay tuned. I'll probably decide that this week and then next week give you an update and put some stuff in the Ravelry group. So if you'd like to participate and if you have any ideas, certainly you know, put them below, put them in the Ravelry group. I definitely read them. I'm very active on social media. I try to be very active on social media. So usually can always get in touch with me either via Rav mail, email, Instagram, or uh, Facebook. Uh, you can always get in touch with me. So, all right. So that's the end of the fiber bits of the, like the whole, I've created these lovely things. Uh, <laughs> so weird. Okay, if you haven't noticed, I'm a little weird. I say weird things. I do weird things. I've been like this my whole entire life. I cannot be alone. I'm sure I'm not alone. Uh, <laughs> so if, if it was, uh, I'm just weird and I don't like cutting these things out because this is who I am as a person. So I don't know. Okay. So that's the end of doing all of the crafting goodness, the things that I have going on right now. So let's get into the dyeing. And oh, the next section I really, I wanted to do was an ask me anything. And so on Instagram, again, you should follow if you don't follow, I post, um, you know, my dye work and my crochet projects and other things that are in progress there and shop updates there. But I did post this morning that I was going to film today and I did ask for questions either to put in the Ravelry group or to put on Instagram or Facebook. I posted in a couple of groups which I've just become a member of, which I've just discovered and I'm so excited. Oh my goodness. So I want to thank Shanna from the Lamb Strings, the Strings and More podcast. Thank you for your recommendation that you gave in your last podcast. I joined the group. I'm so excited. There are so many awesome people in there, like people who are like me, kind of a little crazy and love yarn. And I'm just so excited. So thank you, Shanna, for that recommendation. Um, so anyway, I posted, I'm just going to look at my notes here on Instagram and Facebook asking for questions for an Ask Me Anything. And so I'll pull up questions now and answer them for you. Oh, I'm so excited to do this. I was so hoping that people would post questions and they did. So I'm like, mm, ask me all the questions. I love it. Oh. I love listening to Ask Me Any Things because you get to really just know a person and I'm, uh, nobody posting Ravelry. Oh, I have a couple people. Mama Dawn and Juliana82, thank you for joining my Ravelry group before I've even posted this video. You are so adorable. I hope you enjoy the podcast. Um, nobody posted a question in Ravelry. I know there are a couple on Instagram, so let's check Facebook, see if anybody replied to my post on Facebook. Nobody, nobody replied to me on Facebook. That's okay. So I have a couple questions on Instagram here. Let's go to my account. Ask me anything. Okay, so I have a couple questions, actually a few questions. So from Sunshine Bubblegum, she is the host of the Sunshine Bubblegum podcast and she follows me here on Instagram. And she asked me a couple of questions here. One was, how did you learn to dye yarns? What style or technique do you like to use? So I can answer that. Um, I learned to dye yarns myself. Uh, I was extremely interested and extremely motivated to kind of change the scene for myself in terms of crafting because I had hit this wall again, as I do, you know, every year where I get this really big surge of ideas and then boop, just kind of piddles out. And I'm like, every year it's the same thing. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm going to learn something new about fiber, something I've never known. Well, not that I've never known it. Like, I know people dye yarns because I've used them before, but something I don't know how to do personally. So I looked up. I'm like, it has to be easy to dye yarns. It can't be that hard. People dye shirts, like cotton shirts. Obviously, that's tie-dye, and that's a different technique, which I've learned. But, um... 
So I taught myself how to do it. I looked up a length of channel whoop, on the left hand side. Left hand side. That's the left hand side. Uh, up here for the Chemnitz podcast, Chemnitz tutorials. I mean, Chemnitz tutorials. Um, so I started watching her channel. Uh, it's Rebecca. That's Rebecca from Chemnitz. And she goes through these food dye tutorials where she kind of just shows the basic principles of dyeing a protein fiber like wool um, because it's pretty simple. You use acid dyes. Um, there was an interesting conversation going on about acid dyes in the yarn group I just joined, which was really funny <laughs> uh, because people don't understand that acid dyes are not bad. The term acid dyes is just meaning it's a dye that it binds to fibers in an acidic environment. It binds to the proteins and fibers when the water is more acidic, which means you add vinegar or citric acid. Vinegar is acetic acid, and citric acid is what's in your food, like uh, Sour Patch Kids. That's what coats the Sour Patch Kids, citric acid. Food for thought. Um, so that's how I learned. So I, I watched Kim's tutorials, and I thought, hey, I'm just going to try. And I have food dye in the house, obviously. Who doesn't have some food dye in the house from Easter eggs or for cooking or whatever? And so I grabbed a huge thing of vinegar and I'm like, I'm just gonna do this. Went to my local yarn shop. I picked up a couple of um, hanks of the just plain old cascade wool and I decided I'm gonna dye them. Oh, I have them, I have them, let me get them. So I ended up making preemie caps, which I have to donate. I picked up a plain, I don't know if they're going to be able to use these because they're a little rough and you can't really wash them. Uh, you can hand wash them. So anyway, I picked up a couple skeins of Cascade wool, just plain wool, not super wash, and used my food dyes and this is what I came up with. So this was the first skein that I dyed. It was this green and yellow colorway, just made with green food coloring. This is dyed with food coloring. Um, I might not donate these only because I dyed them with food coloring and you know some people are sensitive to food dyes and babies would be too and these are wool and they're not very um they're not as soft as you'd like them to be for an infant cap so i wanted to see how it would knit up and this is what it looked like knit up gorgeous i was so surprised i'm like this is awful this looks so bad it's too green blah 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 but you don't realize all the subtleties that are going on until you really knit up um a hank of yarn. And then this was the second one I did. Yes, it's stripes, but obviously this is on a very small scale. <clears throat> so this was an ombre dye where I took the hank of yarn and I just dip dyed it into the pot, let the side with the darker color sit in there longer, and then it goes all the way out to white. This was using red and green and blue all together kind of. So it turned out this pinkish, brownish, mauvish, pinkish type color. Uh, yeah, so that's the second skein of yarn that I dyed. And then I was hooked. So that's how it all began. And then I decided I'm gonna go 100% all in, I'm gonna buy my own acid dyes, I'm going to buy a huge shipment of yarn, uh, and that was that. That's exactly how it began, and now it is this crazy thing that I do that I'm so excited for every single day. Like, I go, I can't sleep at night because I'm thinking of all these ideas. It's my life. So that was the first dye I ever did. And then what style or technique do I like to use? Um, so I like all techniques. So I do kettle dyeing, which is where the yarn goes into the pot and the dyes go in the pot with the yarn in different areas, and you get this kind of blended color um, colorway where you have you know different colors at different points in the in the fiber this is also kettle dyed variegated so you have different areas with different saturations using one or more colors and you get some nice blending effects and some nice variegation over different parts of the skein now the Issues with kettle dyeing are making sure that you have uh, an evenly saturated hank of yarn. So laying your yarn in a pot a certain way will yield, you know, a more even distribution of dye. 
If you're dyeing non-superwash fibers, it's a little tougher because you don't want to touch the fiber at all while it's hot because you don't want to felt it. If you use superwash fibers, you can do some gentle turning or maneuvering in the pot to get a more even um, coating of dye. If you've ever seen some um, socks that people will knit up, you know, one sock will look a bit bolder than the other sock and that's because the yarn was kettle dyed and um, you know, the absorption is different, you know, at the top of the water where the yarn is much more exposed. The, if you, if you have a very acidic environment, the yarn will just take up the dye right away. And then underneath is where all the dyes will blend together in the bath and then get taken up into the yarn that way. So you end up with a much, pale, not paler, subtle, kind of like a more muted version of what's on top. So if you can somehow turn the yarn or maneuver the yarn, it makes a much more pleasant um, experience, kind of like this. Um, and then I also do, you know, dip dye techniques. So I've done some gradients recently where, or I'll dip a hank of yarn in to make a repeating colorway, like a pooling type colorway like this, where you take the hank and you dip the hank into the dye water and you either, you know, you let it sit in there for a while and then dip slower and slower in, or you dip up and out. Again, if you're working with non-superwash fibers, you wanna be really careful not to felt your fiber. Uh, superwash, it's a little more forgiving. Um, and then hand painting is another one that I do where you lay the hank out, either, you know, a pre-knit, pre-knit style blank. I knit up these. I'll talk about this in my shop updates, um, but I'll pre-knit a blank and lay it out and paint on it, or I will just lay the hank out as is, and I will use, you know, the acid dyes, um, you know, in a, in a acidic solution to paint, physically paint the yarn. So take a squeeze bottle and spray it over the yarn, use a brush. Um, there are a lot of different techniques to use to do in hand painting. Um, I like to use them all and I like to use them all for different reasons because they all have their purpose in the dyeing world. Um, you know, a lot of people like hand painted yarns because you can get a nice spiraling or pooling effect. Uh, kettle dyeing is great because you get a nice variegation and different tones of color. So you either get some shades or you get some, you know, some lighter versions of the same color in the same hank, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I enjoy all of them. The only thing I haven't tried to dye yet is self-striping. Um, props, props to all self-stripers out there. You know, it's just Cozy Knitter, Jinx Yarns, Hala. That's a, that's a tough one. Um, it's really labor intensive and I'll talk about that in shop updates, but it's really labor intensive to do self-striping yarn as an independent dyer. Um, you need to have a big warping board or a way to wrap long skeins of yarn and then to dye them all in sections and then wind them all back into hanks. It's really labor intensive. So if you've ever purchased a self-striping hank from an independent dyer, you should be thanking them a lot because it takes a lot of work. And that's only co come learning that now as a dyer myself and how different techniques take a different amount of time. Okay, that was a long answer, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, and then I got one more question from Crochet Cakes uh, on Instagram. Which was your first crochet project? Um, I don't remember my first crochet project. I've been crocheting since I was about 13 years old and I am now 32, I'll be 32 on Monday. And I don't remember. Uh, I remember learning to crochet. I did tons of just chaining, chain, 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 chain all day long. I decorated my Christmas tree with them. <coughs> Excuse me. I decorate my Christmas tree with them because, you know, I had to learn to make my tension the way it had to be. And so it just took tons of practice. Literally, my hook in my hand all the time when I got home from school, I was crocheting. And it was something that I really liked to do. I learned to do it on, you know, cheap, cheap yarn like Red Heart Super Saver. And I would just sit there um, and I hold my hook this way. So if you've ever seen videos of me crocheting, I've put a couple up. Uh, I hold my heart hook this way and so I would literally just sit there like this just hook 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 <laughs> all day all night I was a 24 hour day hooker um and it it really paid off because 
as I grew up and continue to do it and continue to practice, I've become quicker and quicker and quicker. I pick up patterns very easily. I can read patterns very easily. I actually teach crochet now. So, you know, it pays off to practice. And I tell that to my students. The only difference between you and I is practice. That's it. Anybody can do it. You can do it. It's just, it's just like learning how to ride a bike. Or if you've ever, if you remember when you first learned to knit, and you know, the needles felt really cumbersome in your hands and you're like, oh, I have to flick the yarn and I have to do this and that. It feels so weird. But then once you get into it and you get practice and practice and practice, you go through that first full skein of yarn and by the end of it, you feel much more comfortable and then you feel more encouraged to do it again. So I encourage you, if you're a knitter and you're trying to learn how to crochet, stick with it. Find a technique that makes you feel comfortable. You can hold your hook like this. You can hold it like this. You can hold it like this. You can hold it whatever way makes you happy. It makes you feel like relaxed and you're enjoying yourself. The, the biggest challenge, I know, I, so anyway, I don't remember my first crochet project. I remember helping my mom do a granny square blanket. Um, she went through a lot with addiction and everything. It was called her sobriety blanket and she, I helped her stitch up that blanket. So it was really meaningful. Um, you know, I helped her stitch all the squares together and. You know, it was a big thing. It was a big deal. Um, so I guess that was my first project, was helping my mom with that. I made scarves and other knickknacks, but... Uh, and then I would make people presents. So I, I, don't, I don't remember specifically the first project I ever did, but I remember doing that with her. So it was really nice. Um, anyway, so if you're a knitter and you want to crochet, find a way that makes you feel comfortable. If you're used to holding your yarn in your right hand for knit, Maybe try doing left hand crochet so that you can hold your yarn in your in your left hand and use your finger to get it around the hook. There's no right or wrong way. Um, and the same thing as a crocheter, if you're learning how to knit, you know, everybody teaches English style knitting where you're holding your work and you're pulling your yarn over the top and then doing it. And that's very awkward for me. So I end up continental knitting. Uh, I think a lot of crocheters who learn to knit secondary will continental knit, so you hold your yarn and it's tensioned in your left hand. So I'm doing this. So I'm slipping, and then my purl, I do a funky purl. So I bring my yarn, I bring my needle under my yarn, my yarn's still at the back of my work. Purl, flick my yarn over, and then pull it through and it makes a purl. Um, but until I found that method of purling, I absolutely hated knitting because I hated purling. Um, so stick with it and if you're interested in learning or finding out, you know, how crochet your knits, if you want me to do a little, you know, demonstration on how I knit and what's comfortable for me, I'm happy to do that. Just let me know in the comments below or let me know on the Ravelry group. Um, I'm happy to do an demonstration and I'll just put the camera facing my hands so you can see. Um, but anyway, so don't give up. Keep going at it. You can do it. Make beautiful things. If you really like the way th those things look and feel, you're going to feel more motivated to do it. So find something that you like. If you like little stuffed animals, learn how to make stuffed animals. If you like blankets, learn how to make blankets. You know, start at the beginning with the basics and just keep practicing. You can do it. For sure. For sure. Okay, so... That was the end of the Ask Me Anything. I didn't have any other questions this week, but if you do have questions for me about dyeing, knitting, crocheting, I don't spin, although I intend to try. Don't tell my husband that I'd like to try that. Uh, uh, that would come later on for me anyway. I don't wanna, you know, burden myself with learning too much at once. But um, if you have other questions for me, just let me know. Uh, pop it in the Ravelry group. I, I'll check on it if I can answer some questions offline and I, I'll answer them on the forum or um, I'll save them for the video if I don't have too many questions. I'm happy to answer to the best of my abilities and nothing really is taboo. If I don't feel comfortable answering something, I just won't answer it, but you're welcome to ask me anything you like. So, close this out. So, that's the end of that portion this is a long one this is 40 minutes in so far I'll do be very quick with shop updates so if you're not interested in shop updates or yarn updates then I'll see you next time uh, and if you are then just stay tuned you're in the right place for that so some of you 
may know. So this is my latest dye. This is a gradient. Uh, it is called Shell Cottage. And this is what it looks like. So gradient yarns are pretty difficult to do if you don't purchase pre-made knit blanks, which I don't. I make all of my own. I paint my blanks. This is a blank. So it starts, one end of the yarn starts here and another end starts here. And then each section is dyed a different color. I used three colors for this dye. And this begins at a navy, goes into more of an aqua teal color, to a sandy color, and a stone color, which is inspired by Shell Cottage. So that's what this looks like. And then I ball it up on my painful baller, which is too small for me. It's it's a four it's a four ounce baller, but I have problems doing um, balling with it because stuff like DK or bulky weight, it tends to flip up onto itself, and it will if my tension is too tight, it will just flip to the top of the ball like this, see these here? And then it will make my ball fly off the, the, the baller itself, which I posted a video about, I thought that was funny. I was taking a serious video, I'm like, I'm gonna put up a video of me making a ball of yarn and da 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 da, and this is gonna be so great. And I'm talking to the kids and talking to my husband and whoop whoop, whoop there goes the ball. <laughs> but, so anyway, this is Shell Cottage. This is up in the shop. I have two balls available, actually these two. I have to make this one into a ball. Um, just because the blanks aren't very pretty, I don't like selling them in the blanks. Um, it come, it's much nicer, much more compact. Uh, but these are the ones that are available. So these will, these are up in the shop right now. And then I, so this was my trial and error uh, blank. This was one of the first ones I made um, for my sock weight blanks, and I'll get into that in a second. But I have three colorways that I dyed up. I'm getting more text messages, oh, text messages. Okay, so I have three colorways. So this is Hobbit Feet. It's harder to see the gradient on film. It's hard to catch, but this is very much a yellow green. This is the more pale moss green, and then this is like a greenish brown on the outside, like a nice forest green. Um, this is Hobbit Feet. This one is Weasley's Wizard Wheezes. <laughs> I'm very excited for this one. Uh, I did like a really a nice uh, ginger color where it's um, kind of like a brownish orange faded into this bright plum. Gorgeous. So the plum is inspired obviously by the shop and their logo. They have like this bright pl plum store. Like the whole building is like this purple color. So I thought that was kind of fun to have. So I have that in regular and sparkle um, available. I have two regular and one sparkle left. But these are fun. And then the last one I only have two available of. And this one is Gilderoy, <laughs> inspired by Gilderoy Lockhart. So it has this beautiful deep um, purple. This is more of a blue toned purple and this is more of a red tone plum, just so you can see the difference. They're different colors. This is more blue toned, this is more red toned. Um, fading into, you know, lighter purples and then with this pop of teal or aqua in the middle. Um, gorgeous. So it was inspired by the one and only Gilderoy Lockhart. Uh, he's very flamboyant, has a very flamboyant sense of style, an awful wizard, but these are available in Sparkle. I'm surprised the Sparkler is still left. You can see the glitter there. It's so fun. It's so fun. Very magical. So the special thing about these balls that I really wanted to touch upon because I had a question from a customer who bought one is, uh, what do you mean by double strand? So each of these balls is wound as a double strand. What that means is when I knit it up, I knit two strands together. I took my hank wound it into a ball, a single strand ball. And then I took that ball, I put the ends, the loose ends together. So here's the loose ends. I put the loose ends together and I wound that into a ball. So the yarn was doubled up. If you've ever purchased a double knit sock blank, like a commercially made one, it's the same thing. Um, and I knit that into a blank myself. I had a little trouble with my first batch because my tension wasn't quite right, so I ended up with this half. So this is up for sale as, you know, it's 60 grams. 
um, and it just has you know the mid-tone greens and then into those yellow greens here on Hobbit Feet. This is the other end. Um, you can see, I don't know if, if it's easy for you to see on the camera, you can see there are two strands per knit but one strand is tighter than the other strand and what happens is when I go to unravel this to ball it up one strand unravels faster than the other which creates this gigantic yarn barf and I spent hours trying to figure out what my problem was but you can see so this is a dropped stitch obviously but you can see each row each stitch is two strands together so if you purchase a commercial sock blank excuse me and a double knit they're very pretty you can paint on them Andre Sue knits I'll put her channel up here. She's been painting these beautiful sock blanks. But my sock blanks, they're like this. They're not really tightly, um, tightly knit together. They're very long, they're very awkward. It would be twice the length of this. If I did a single, single knit sock blank, like this is as tall, like this goes arm to arm. I can't even get it, can't get it on the frame. Um, but it's not suitable just to sell like this because you'd be sitting there with this long scarf of fabric. So I, I ball it back up. So the way I ball it up is I'll take, so once it's all knit, I take a piece of yarn and I mark the beginning of the, the blank and the end of the blank. And when I unravel the blank, I put the beginning of the double knit blank. So you can see here, there are two strands together I marked and there are two strands together I marked and I ball it up so that way for the gradient and matching sock lovers out there you can knit two socks or two mittens or two two pieces at the same time now I can do these in a single single strand gradient which I will offer in my shop it's not up right now as die to order only because these are very labor intensive but I will put them up um, I'll, I'll dye some up as a single strand, but you can see, oh, you can see when you undo it, so you, so this is still a loop here, this is the center, this is literally the center of the skein of yarn. So you snip it, and then you have two independent strands that you can cast on, on two sets of needles, and then just go at it. Just like you would for a sock blank, you'd you'd start unraveling and you'd have those two ends and knit together. So that's what you would do with these. And so I decided to keep these balled together to make it easier instead of those who like to knit their socks at the same time. They don't have to carry around two balls of yarn, you just carry around this one ball of yarn. Um, and that's why I marked the end so it's easier to see that it is a double strand. And so every single ball is marked on the outside and on the inside with the, the poles. So it just takes a second to find where the scrap yarn is. Where's this one? This one's wound really tightly too. Here it is. So you can see, here's the center pole in the scrap yarn, and then here's the outer pole in the scrap yarn, and I just tied it to the end so that's easy to see. And you can either center pull and start knitting two socks at once or two gloves at once, or you can outer pull and knit two socks or two gloves or two whatevers at once, and you'll get the same effect on both. So you'll have a matching gradient pair of socks. And that's the thing with, um, you know, single knit blanks. If you buy the commercial single knit blanks, like, like Andre Sue does like these patterning pieces. So both socks are gonna come out looking very, very similar. But with a gradient, you really wanna have this, you know, nice matching pair of socks. So um, that's what I've done. If anybody has purchased these from me and you have a question about it or an issue, please feel free to contact me. Um, I did have someone contact me this morning who bought it and I explained it to her. She was like, oh, that makes sense. So. There are two ends in the middle and two ends on the outside and you work them both at the same time. If you're not comfortable doing that, you're free to take it and try and wind it into two separate 50 gram balls, but this is still 100 grams of yarn. It's just wound up so that you can have two working ends on the outside and two working ends in the middle and you're gonna get the same exact gradient. So you can work it from purple all the way to orange or you can work it from orange to purple and you're gonna have two matching socks. Pretty cool, pretty cool, I was excited about that. This is obviously a single strand because it's DK weight. I don't know anybody who double knits DK weight, but um, 
like meaning knitting two things at the same time. This cake is so ugly. I'm so mad at my baller. <laughs> but um, it's a functional cake, but it's just not pretty. This is a single strand cake. So anyway, so if you've ever purchased or if you're intending to purchase one of these, just so you know that the ones that I have listed, I do mark them to say that they're double strand, double stranded. Okay. I think this one's already marked. This cake is double stranded. Both inner and outer poles are marked for use. Intended to knit both strands at once for identical socks. Any questions, please ask. So that's that. That's that. I don't think I have anything else today. I've droned on long enough. This is coming on to an hour. This is so long. I never thought I would talk for an hour. But um, again, I have. Whatever. Let's cue the music. Let's cue the music. Uh, it was great to talk to you guys today. If you have questions, you just want to say hi, introduce yourself, leave a comment below. Leave a like if this is something that you'd like to see more of. Um, again, I have a Ravelry group if you want to join in the conversation that would be great I intend to host some crochet or knit alongs maybe even a dialogue if uh, any fellow dyers are interested to do a dialogue that would be cool um, yeah but those are things to come you can find me on Instagram Facebook littlebeancrochet.etsy.com that is my business website if you're looking at yarns you can always message me on there about yarns I'm happy to answer any questions you got if you got ideas and brainstorms you love nerdy things like I love nerdy things and you'd like to see something come up in the shop just send me a message and maybe we'll make it happen so uh, I'll talk to you guys soon uh, I should be filming again next Tuesday it seems like Tuesday is the day and um, have a wonderful week enjoy your weekend stay cool if it's hot where you are and I'll talk to you soon Bye.